Parental guidance is advised for the following program. as we now know it. Uh, it did start in the mid-80s with David Bell and his friends who adapted something that was created before into the urban environment. This was the, uh, the natural method, or le méthode naturel. It was created by a French guy called Georges Hébert in the early 20th century. And uh, it was a set of moral and physical skills that would benefit anyone who practiced it. And this was picked up by the military in France, and they created a set of obstacles for the soldier called le parcours du combattant, the path of the fighter, of the soldier. This was uh, obviously uh, practiced a lot, and uh, David Bell's father, who was uh, a soldier and also uh, went to the Vietnam War, uh, practiced it a lot, and uh, young David was inspired by that. So he shared that knowledge with his friends in the suburbs of France, in Lys, and uh, that was the beginning of parkour. That's where it all started. And then, now, we know it as parkour. <laughs> Parkour is a discipline, much like a martial art, except your opponent isn't another person, but your environment. And by learning to use your body to overcome obstacles through movement, you get to develop yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Like most people, when I first saw parkour at the movies, on TV, or online, I was impressed. Um, but I never thought I'd actually do it because it looked way too extreme or dangerous. Luckily, I had a friend introduce it to me by chance. And after just one session, I was hooked. I realized that when you practice parkour properly, it's not just about these big jumps that you see on the videos. It's much more than that. Parkour actually forces you to grow. The amazing thing is, when you see somebody do a move that you think is way beyond your ability, and then after a few training sessions, or maybe even within that one training session, you being able to overcome that, overcome your fear, the obstacle, and actually execute it, that's incredible, that feeling of accomplishment. And that's what got me hooked initially. And then about half a year later, I decided that I was going to make a stronger commitment to the discipline. And that's when I invited a small circle of friends to come and join me to make sure that I trained more regularly and consistently. Unexpectedly, other people showed interest, and pretty soon, after about two or three months, I kind of formalized the whole situation and started the Superfly Monkey Dragons free running academy. I've been here in Singapore for the past five months. I was 
was invited by Derek to come uh, help Superfly Monkey Dragons as a head coach. Me and Derek, we met last year in Bangkok, and after a few days of training, we became really close friends. And a few months later, he called me in, asking me to come and help, and I said, sure. So I just, like, after a month, I was in Singapore starting to teach, and I, am, I still am, and enjoying myself, yeah. This what actually makes parkour so interesting is that it helps people realize their full potential. People are not used to moving, but they want to move. They see people moving and they get curious, they get interested, you know? The, the human body was created for moving, and nowadays people kind of forget that. So as soon as you come to one class, you know, and you learn one or two sets of movements, you become so, uh, you feel so accomplished that you want to share that to people. You want to, you want to, uh, infect people with the parkour bug. Parkour offers an amazing way for people to reconnect because at its heart, it's altruistic. It's about people helping each other. It's about being strong to be useful. And you can really see that through the training because people are helping each other and they're helping each other, support each other to progress. And it's best expressed, I feel, through the principle of we start together, we finish together. A beginner learns all individual techniques of parkour and drills them until they become instinct. It's a very progressive state. Everything has to be learned individually and the body is conditioned. An intermediate student connects movements easily and engages with the flow. He faces the challenges of fear and height factors. He learns how to challenge himself and listen to his body better so he doesn't take any unnecessary risks. The advanced level is about perfecting the flow and freedom. Everything is executed with precision and accuracy. When execution is perfect, there are no limits. Someone once told me that a precision is not a precision until it is precise. Parkour makes me do the impossible possible. Parkour can be done by anyone, and I mean anyone, seriously. When, uh, when I was practicing back in Portugal, we were, the age was ranging from 15 to 30. When I came to Singapore, I was very surprised to find out that my oldest student was actually 51. And then that was like inspiring to me. The, the man really inspired me to become better. His smile became a house husband when he lost his job in 2008. He didn't want to entrust his children with domestic helpers. So he told his wife to focus on her career while he takes care of their children. Paco was at, at the beginning was a new word for me. I didn't even hear anywhere. I haven't seen anybody doing Paco. Before my son came and uh, uh, told me, told us, I mean my wife and I say I want to do Paco. Then say what is Paco? Uh, what, what do you mean Paco? What is what's that? So he showed us some video clips and she said, I said, oh my God, you, you cannot be doing that. You know, it's like it's it's very dangerous. It's very uh, risky. Why, why do you want to do this kind of a thing? I say, no way, no way. Then he was explaining, you know, there's a workshop coming. Why not I go for the workshop for us? And then uh, you, you guys decide whether I should be doing it or not. Now, and interestingly, my dad accompanied for the workshop on the first day and decided to join in the second day. So I was thinking, this is really, like, good. I'm, I'm also very interested. It doesn't surprise me as much because he's always been into fitness, but I don't get to see him do parkour a lot, so when I do see him do random things, it does shock me because it, it, it shows me how much he's been training. He admires superheroes for their good deeds, 
how they come to the rescue of those in need. To him, parkour gives him the opportunity to be selfless and altruistic. But he had to convince his real superheroes, his parents. And when I first started parkour, I didn't think my parents would support it at all. I mean, not every kid gets the opportunity for their dad to do parkour with them, so I really appreciate that my dad does parkour with me. Well, at the age of 51, it's amazing to see his smile, having that physique, and that physique is actually ideal for parkour. Perhaps because of his conditioning, he has done lots of workouts uh, at his bad time. He's now more uh, agile, he's now more flexible, and he has muscular strength and muscular endurance. This is one of the conditions, key conditions for a person when he or she is doing parkour. People usually base their opinion of parkour from what they see in videos, and that is absolutely wrong. A video is a display of skills, it's the culmination of years and years of training. But that's not what parkour is really about. The training of parkour is more about preparation. You, you do prepare, you do train, uh, you repeat moves until they become instinct. You prepare your body through conditioning so you can become stronger. And also that prevents you from taking any unnecessary risk, thus uh, getting injured, you know. <laughs> it is a very dedicated system and uh, it's not, not at all uh, a, an extreme mindless sport. You know, it's a very, um, a very intimate and a very personal and a very, a very detailed uh, training system and or regime, if you will, just like any martial art. Parkour techniques involve jumping, climbing, running, and vaulting. So these are mostly the things that you have to do when you're on a run. If you're, uh, if you have obstacles in front of you, you should be able to overcome them. Even if you know if they're higher than you, if they're a bit shorter than you, if there's a gap, you should be able to overcome them with those techniques. To understand what happens to one's body when they go, when they perform the flip, is through biomechanics. When a person does a flip, the first thing they do is to push off from the floor so that they can change the direction in the air. Once they're in the air, then they will do a rotation, angular rotation. To do an angular rotation, all they need to do is to put their body into a ball, a small ball. And one way to do that is to tuck in their knees to the chest and put their hands onto the knees. And when they are in the air rotating, all they need to do is just follow through and land onto the floor. Parkour is known as the extreme sport. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, want to say parkour is dangerous. It will be dangerous if you're not careful. I mean, any, anywhere, even if you're running or jogging, it will be dangerous if you're careless. The demands of parkour is actually strenuous. One of the things a person needs to understand in terms of his body is, is physical fitness. Given that parkour requires one to travel long distance, jump at different elevation, different orientation, he or she needs to be physically fit. Secondly, to overcome all those obstacles and do those stunts, he needs to have muscular endurance and muscular fitness. Thirdly, it's about mental strength. Considering that when one does parkour, the environment is always changing, and this perhaps could instill fear onto the athlete when they, does, when they do parkour. To overcome fear is important when, when participating in parkour, simply because when one is in fear, the body tends to seize up and tends to not perform as agile or as flexible as when one is not in fear. Lastly, one needs to know the limitation of the body, when to stop, what not to do, when to do, and this could have severe repercussions. One of them is injury or even death. I have suffered a knee injury. I lost my balance. I landed on one feet, slipped, 
and my knee came and hit the side of the wall. And it was really, really, very, very bad hit. So I was not able to walk for a while. And I was off training for one whole month. Just on the first jump, I slipped and fell backwards. But there was no floor, it was just a rough concrete slope down. So I fell and I rolled backwards once and I scraped my elbow, I scraped. But luckily, I didn't injure my knee bone. It was just a, uh, above the knee, just a muscle. So uh, I took off one month away from training. I really, like, I was very upset at that time. I couldn't train, very afraid of becoming weaker. But after two weeks, it closed up. It was a bit better. And then I started training again, so it was OK. Parkour is a very, very safe practice, OK? I cannot stress that enough. It is very, very safe. You take calculated risks, OK? Parkour is all about preparing your body or getting your body aware of the limits that you have, you know? That is very, very important. Obviously, some scrapes and some bruises might occur, but that's, that's just as normal as, you know, you skip some steps on the MRT station or maybe you're walking down the street, you slide on a puddle and you fall. You know, it's common things that happen, but it doesn't go any further than that. You know, you practice, you repeat the exercises to infinity, you know. You prepare your body for impact. Uh, you know, you, you only do something if you're really sure you can do it. To me, parkour is about stepping out of your comfort zone and progressing oneself. For me, parkour is a way of discipline. It teaches me how to adapt to the environment. To test Ismail and Teresh's ability, I've put together this little obstacle course, which basically strings together some of the standard movements in parkour and uh, puts them into one flow. So first they'll be doing a vault, which we call the monkey vault, over the bar. Then they're going to move over and do a drop, and that's basically dropping from a distance off a wall. Then there'll just be a couple of uh, jumps, jump onto a chair and then jump onto a wall, just simple jumps. Then the next bit's going to be a little bit more challenging where uh, they'll have to do a cat leap, and that's basically leaping from a height and then reaching over to a wall that is at some distance away from them. Uh, the next part is quite difficult, where you need to traverse what we call traversing, moving across the wall, uh, just using your arms. And that can be very tiring if you haven't trained yourself. And then, uh, of course, being able to pull yourself up from that traversing position and then getting back standing and then doing a precision jump. Uh, a precision jump is basically having to jump from one specific spot to another and requires a lot of skill and control to be able to execute that move correctly. And finally, we just finish off with a simple vault over the railing and back to uh, pretty much near position A. I think that this is actually really awesome because we rarely get a chance to go through routines and stuff. So having a course to test my, my ability to flow well with the surrounding environment, I think it's really a great opportunity to test myself. I think it was actually, it was tougher than I originally thought because the hardest part was moving across the wall, the high wall. I was traversing across the wall. So it was really tearing, so after going across, I couldn't really come up very well. Particularly younger practitioners, they like to really practice on the movements and sometimes they let some of the conditioning go. And as a result, um, you saw that Teresh had a little bit more difficulty moving across, traversing the wall, and then getting up. Well, it was a fun run. It was, it was very fun. You know, I got to test my limits. And all in all, I think it was great. I did a roll, got a little bit of scrape, but, you know, it was a good run. Enjoyed it. There are differences between Ismail and Tarish. One being older, one being younger. 
As one gets older, he or she will have less rigidity, less flexibility, less agility. That doesn't mean that the older person is limited in performing parkour. The older person may have better uh, judgment, uh, make correct decision, uh, calculated decision, does not take risks, and compared to a person who's younger. And this could be one of the advantages of a person who's older and performing parkour. I'm ready. Let's do it. First half was uh, okay. I could manage. But from the point where I jump onto the lower wall and I, I went to do the cat hang, if I've stopped and then did the uh, cat hang, I, I, I couldn't have done it. That's why I just uh, ran and just did the cat hang. It was really, really, uh, like, I was finding it a bit scary. Well, it's good, and I feel good about it. As I have always believed that uh, age shouldn't be a fact to stop you from doing what you want to do physically or mentally. Okay, so the obstacle course today was really pitched at uh, more of a beginner level, so it wasn't like all the crazy stunts that you see in parkour videos. And I think it's important to illustrate that because parkour isn't just about all the big things. It's also about the elementary things, the basics, the fundamentals, and it really shows that it can be enjoyed at any level. You don't have to be an elite uh, parkour athlete uh, to enjoy parkour. You can start enjoying it straight away. And also, that it's accessible to everybody. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can progress at your own pace. Uh, you decide what level you want to achieve. You decide you know, whether you want to just practice stuff at, at the ground level or whether you want to take it up higher. It's really up to the individuals how far they want to take it, uh, but still be able to enjoy the process.